I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24.10 as a sign of his coming and the end of the age that there would be a falling away from the truth in the Bible. As a result of many falling away, Jesus prophesied in verse 11 false prophets would come along and deceive many. Many of these false prophets will be in the ministry for financial gain as we read in 2 Peter 2, 1-3. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of the truth will be maligned, and in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. This is exactly what we are seeing in the Christian church today. Churches do so much, not just from a humanitarian standpoint, but the greatest thing we do is bring spiritual truths that transform. What we do as ministers of the gospel is so vitally important because every single day we are a hospital to the sick, not necessarily the physically sick, though we also help take care of that. Many churches have health centers, etc., but we are a hospital for those who are soul sick, those who are spiritually sick, because we bring forth the Word of God and we bring forth truth that gets deep down in your soul and the way you think and you feel about things. Maybe you'd like to sow a $91 seed, and that's just putting your faith with Psalm 91 or maybe $9 or whatever God tells you to do. If you want to be a blessing to Paula White Ministry or City of Destiny, you can go to the website at paulawhite.org. We would love for you to help us and stand with us. We'd love for you to stand with your church. Don't forget, now is not the time to abandon your covenant with God. It's the time that you go deeper. Stand with your pastor. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Fear of this, this coronavirus is, is faith in its ability to hurt you or kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the fear of what are we going to do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Well, they won't let us go to church. Well, email it in there, text and give or something, but you get your tithe in that church. If you have to go take it down there and drop it off and unstick it under the door or something, right. you right. get that tithe in that church, you get that offering in that church, and then you go home and you do what we're supposed to do.
Now, I will, I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you this now. Don't, don't get disturbed because he said three billionaires. Now, I don't, I don't want you to get disturbed because uh, since I'm one of them, it'll only leave two more. <laughs> no, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Of course, I'm saying this with a smile on my face, but I'm serious as I can be. But now, I'm not one of those three since I already am one. <laughs> I've already appropriated that. I've been walking in that a long time. The last... Now, don't tell them senators this. <laughs> The last time we totaled it up, which has been some time ago, this ministry, since it's been in operation 41 years this month, the last, the, the, the last accounting, and this has been, this has been uh, two, three years ago, so there would probably be at least 150 million more added to this. Well, our income last year was over 100 million dollars. So um, there has been over a billion three come into this ministry since it's went into operation. So, Amen. <laughs> I'm not a billionaire because there's been over a billion dollars come through this ministry. I am a billionaire because the assignment that the Lord gave me, he said, I want you to begin to confess the billion flow because as long as you were in the million flow, you were winning millions. You go into the billion flow, you win billions. So I said, yes, sir, I believe I receive it. That's been a number of years ago, and I have confessed that I am in the billion flow and that I am a billionaire in the kingdom of God. 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 5. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdraw yourself. Instead of stressing the importance of wealth, the Bible warns against pursuing it. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 19-21, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Put your hand on that television set. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He received your healing. Yes, now, say it, I take it. I take it. I have it. I have it. It's mine. It's, it's mine. mine. I thank you and praise you for it. Yes. Lord. And I forgive if I have aught against any. I forgive. And I praise you that I'm well and whole. And I praise you that I'm well and whole. Yes. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. I'm healed. Yes. Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. False prophet is the Greek word pseudo-prophetes, which means a pretended foreteller or religious imposter. A false prophet is a person who spreads false teachings or messages while claiming to speak the word of God. Rather than speak the word of the Lord, false prophets deliver messages that originate in their own hearts as we read in Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. In the Old Testament, punishment for false prophets was severe, as we read in Deuteronomy 18.20. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, 
which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. In the New Testament, Jesus warns his followers about false prophets as we read in Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Jesus then gives a dire warning to false prophets as we read in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Scripture teaches believers to be diligent in faith and devotion to Christ's teachings so that they will be able to spot false prophets and false teachers quickly. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. 1 John 4.1 Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. What does it mean to test the spirits? The reason for the admonition to test the spirits, or test all things, is that there are many false prophets, or wolves in sheep's clothing, that try to lead Christians astray. Sadly, there are many people who claim to speak for God, who are presenting a false gospel that is powerless to save. Such errant teaching leaves people with a false hope of salvation. 2 Corinthians 11, 13-15 warns us, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. The reason for testing the spirits is to see if it is truly from God, or if it is a lie from Satan and his servants. The test is to compare what is being taught with the clear teaching of the Bible. The Bible alone is the Word of God. It alone is inspired and inerrant. Therefore, the way to test the spirits is to see if what is being taught is in line with the clear teaching of Scripture. In Acts 17, 10, and 11, the Berean Jews were commended because after they heard the teachings of Paul and Silas, they examined the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. The Bereans were called noble for doing so. Testing the spirits means that one must know how to examine the Scriptures. Rather than accept every teaching, discerning Christians diligently study the Scriptures. Then they know what the Bible says and therefore can test all things and hold fast to what is true. In order to do this, a Christian must be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of God is to be a lamp and a light to our path. We must let its light shine on the teachings and doctrines of the day. The Bible alone is the standard by which all truth must be judged. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. John 15, 18-20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Some Wythe County High School students are demanding an apology from an elected official after they say that he personally attacked them for being gay. County Supervisor Stacy Terry made the post on Facebook last month, which went viral locally, receiving both support and criticism. 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer is in Withville tonight, where the Board of Supervisors got an earful. 
It all started here in Wythe County after a Board of Supervisors member posted on his political Facebook page calling into question the rights of gay students and the values of Christianity here in Wythe County schools. That sparked outrage here in this community, bringing out the largest crowd to this Board of Supervisors meeting that they say they've seen in a long time. They felt your hate, sir, but they've also felt so much love in this community. That's Megan Patrick, a language teacher at Rural Retreat High School, receiving a standing ovation. Her comments directed at Supervisor Stacy Terry, who found himself in the hot seat for his comments about the LGBTQ plus community. I really feel more like my students were the target. Um, I, I was here tonight to speak on their behalf. Patrick has this sticker posted on her door, a rainbow and the word safe space in Spanish. Terry posted about it on his political Facebook page, saying he's, quote, tired of people hiding behind tolerance and equality. And he wants to know where the classroom with a picture of a Bible and a cross is that says safe space. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that he is the creator of all things and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists. God demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator. And when a society does not glorify him as God, he gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil. Verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. It is evident by looking at society that we are in the third and final judgment on America. In these last days, society has not retained God in their knowledge, and in return, God has given them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. When a nation tells God that they no longer want or need him and actually tell him to go away so they can wallow in their sins, eventually God says, okay. When Terry alluded to gay kids being part of the quote collapse of humanity and that he will vote his Christian values when it comes time to budgets that really angered some. Students held hands and fought tears while a few people supported Terry, saying his comments were taken out of context. He has known since we went to high school together that I'm a lesbian. So for everybody to sit up here and say he is homophobic and he does not like gay people, that is completely false and unfounded. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3, 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Do you know what the most important news story of our generation will be? What is the biggest event that will shake the entire earth within the lifetime of most of you? The second coming of Christ will be the most important event of this generation. If the King of Kings is returning soon to establish the kingdom of God upon this earth, you should be getting ready for it. The Lord Jesus foretold that there would be plagues or pestilences in various places in the last days before he returns, as we read in Luke 21:11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. 
definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. We're going to begin with breaking news because more than one-fourth of Americans are now being ordered to stay home. Today, the governors of New York, Illinois, and Connecticut joined California and Pennsylvania shutting down most businesses. Workers considered essential are exempt, and grocery stores, pharmacies, and takeout restaurants will stay open in those states. This all comes as U.S. coronavirus cases now top 17,000, and there has been a greater than 25 percent spike in deaths just since Thursday. Today, we also learned the virus could be twice as deadly for men. The Senate is working late tonight on a bailout package many corporations say is desperately needed. United Airlines is warning without help it will have to cut payroll by more than half starting next month. There is some good news. The deadline for filing individual income tax returns was extended until July 15th, and the Army Corps of Engineers says it will set up makeshift intensive care units in hospitals and college dorms in New York and other states. There is a lot to get to tonight, a lot of information. So we've got a team of correspondents standing by. Jamie Yukas leads us off tonight in Los Angeles. Jamie. Nora, the measures enacted in New York and here in California have now been adopted in three other states. They're mandating nearly every worker stay home. And businesses like that spa, the furniture store behind me, and this salon that's all locked up, they're all now closed. It's all an attempt to slow the spread of coronavirus. We need everyone to be safe. New York is officially on social distancing lockdown. Governor Andrew Cuomo announced everyone off the streets except for the most essential workers. And today we're bringing it to 100% of the workforce uh, must stay home. This is the most drastic action we can take. The move came after California's governor, Gavin Newsom, issued a similar order, warning without action, more than half of the state's 40 million residents would get infected. They'll meet this moment to protect themselves, to protect them fam their families, and to protect the broader community. The statewide orders are only allowing essential businesses to stay open, including pharmacies, gas stations, and grocery stores. Jeff Porter was stocking up to hunker down. I feel like he wouldn't have done it unless they really felt it was necessary. So um, I don't mind that he did that. At the White House today, President Trump dismissed the idea of a national shelter in place. I don't think so, because you go out to the Midwest, you go out to other locations, and uh, they're watching it on television, but they don't have the same problems. With the increase in testing, more cases are being confirmed. Hospitals are scrambling. States are competing with the federal government to get critical life-saving equipment like ventilators. Some experts criticize the national response. We can't let our health care workers be in this situation for very long. We need a, a, a radical upward <clears throat> transformation of the, of the supply chain. But citizens continue to step up. With schools out, this bus driver in Georgia is now delivering meals to families in need. Just knowing that they're getting a hot meal that maybe otherwise they may not is, is very gratifying. And as streets empty and restaurants close, coronavirus patients like Florida resident 29-year-old Kaylin Sheedy are sounding the alarm. It's one of those things where until you go through it, you don't really realize the impacts that you could have on others. The so-called shelter-in-place orders in New York and Illinois will go into effect over the weekend. It's already in place here in California. If you break the stay-at-home order, it is a misdemeanor and violators can be fined. This morning, we have new information following our report last Saturday from inside the Secret Service office investigating coronavirus-related scams. On Friday, Attorney General William Barr urged the public to report these suspected criminals. The Attorney General had already told U.S. attorneys to prioritize these scams and now the Justice Department is recommending each office establish a coronavirus fraud coordinator. Joining us once again is CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge. Catherine, good morning. Well, good morning, Dana. What, what we know since last week is through a senior FBI official who told us here in Washington that they have seen a significant spike in COVID-19 cyber scams across the nation. And what the Bureau anticipates is that these criminals, Dana, will zero in on the states with the highest rates of infection, Washington, New York, and California. 
And we also saw new evidence this week that the criminals are tracking the headlines. The FBI revealed to our investigative team that they're seeing new scams involving government relief checks, as well as scams that are targeting individuals who are working from home. And the maddening part about this, Catherine, is that it, the most vulnerable population to coronavirus are the ones who are being targeted by this. Um, so they're getting hit both ways here. What, what is the government doing right now to stop it? Well, one of the things that we're seeing are increased warnings from the federal government. We had some new images that were released this week by Homeland Security to show how they are interdicting what they believe to be counterfeit test kits that are coming into the United States. These test kits were intercepted at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, and then they were handed over to the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, for review. And then late last night, Jeff, the FDA put out what amounts to a national alert telling people that they are seeing these unauthorized test kits and they want the bottom line to be for folks at home that they haven't cleared anything so no green light from the FDA for anyone to sell these kits to folks to use for testing at home. Catherine, do we have any idea of how successful the scammers have been so far? Well, we couldn't get a dollar figure, Dana, from the FBI or the Secret Service about the extent of the scams. But I can tell you from two decades of reporting in this national security space that when you have the Attorney General of the United States coming out publicly and urging folks at home to report these scams and then mandating that U.S. attorneys make it the highest priority to prosecute these crimes, and then you have, through our reporting here at CBS News, the Secret Service and the FBI so forward-leaning, that tells me that we have a significant amount of scam activity inside the United States that's really hijacked this theme of COVID-19. Hey, uh, Catherine, what should people be doing right now to help protect themselves? Well, Jeff, it can be really overwhelming for folks, but I think there are a number of things that you can do that are pretty simple. Number one, if you get something that is unsolicited, whether it's a text message or an email or a phone call with a COVID-19 theme, that is an automatic red flag. Number two, if you get these messages and there's a sense of urgency, sort of a demand to act immediately and to provide money upfront, either a deposit or a full payment, that's another red flag. And the third thing is that you can do your own reporting. You can be your own investigator. If someone calls you at home, take their name, ask for their phone number. Sometimes that's simply enough to stop them in their tracks. And if you get that name and phone number, go on the web, look up the organization, give them a call, ask them if this person is working for them. And if you get an email in your inbox that looks like it might be official, offering you advice about COVID-19, just take a careful look at the address because these scammers have addresses that look real, but it's usually off by at least one letter or one numeral. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. From above? Rome looks as empty and lifeless as people say it feels. But despite Europe's tightest lockdown, authorities say the death toll is still spiking. At least 627 new fatalities in just 24 hours, a one-day record. In the hardest hit north, emergency rooms are at, or some doctors say past, the breaking point. Sky News gained rare access to an intensive care unit in the city of Bergamo. 50 to 60 new COVID-19 cases here each day. Doctors urging the world to act now. What they would suggest is just shut down to stop all the outbreak and uh, not come in this kind of situation. I spoke to an Italian reporter about the Sophie's Choice Italian doctors now face. We hear about doctors who are having to make life and death decisions, deciding who's going to live, who's going to get the ventilator, who's going to get the hospital bed, who's going to get treatment, and who's not. It's true. They are choosing based, in, based on life expectancy and, and other factors who can live and who cannot be treated properly, which is something absolutely, completely foreign to our, to our culture. COVID-19 is blanketing and changing how we all live. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for not recognizing the signs of his first coming as we read in Matthew 16, 1-3. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, 
and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. The religious leaders of Jesus' day had full knowledge of the prophecies of the Messiah. Yet these religious leaders ignored the signs and still rejected him. If the religious leaders of Jesus' day missed the signs of Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to pay close attention to the signs of Jesus' second coming? One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.